um, uh, today we will talk about uh, customer accommodation. And remember, we are talking about customer and um, and all the business operations from the supply uh, chain uh, perspective. Uh, we will talk about customer focused marketing, customer service, customer satisfaction, customer success. Uh, and developing customer relationship uh, management strategies. So let's let's go back to who is the customer. Remember when we talked about uh, the difference between customer and consumer. So if we talk from the perspective of the total supply chain, you know, end to end, the customer is the ultimate recipient of the product or the service and we differentiated between the consumer and the customer and this could be divided into two main categories the end user in uh, the cost uh, the consumer market and the customer company in the business market because maybe your business or your company is working b2b so the end user of the product in uh, uh, the consumer market, so this refers to all the individuals or households. Sometimes some products target families or the household uh, who purchase and use the product uh, for their personal consumption. Uh, they are the final consumers in the supply chain. Um, for example, um, when we buy groceries from a supermarket, um, uh, buying clothes uh, from a retail store, uh, or order uh, products uh, online, but the key word here is personal use. A uh, customer company in the business market, so this refers to any organization or business that purchase products or services for their operations or resale. So whether this product is uh, or service will be part of their operations or they buy these products or service to resell it uh, to a consumer market. Uh, so in this case, they act as customers within the supply chain. Uh, for example, procuring uh, goods or services to support their business activities um uh for example like restaurant when they buy uh, food supplies and and and, and food um uh, items uh, from a distributor um or a construction company uh, buying uh building materials or uh, uh, or uh, components or uh, a retail stocking products for resale Think of um, uh, Costco, for example, or uh, even grocery stores. So from the perspective of a specific company within the supply chain, okay, we need to admit people. Uh, the customer can be seen as the intermediate customer organizations that exist between your company and the end user. Uh, that's why we spent some time differentiating between customer and consumer, and now we talk about the end user. Okay, so these intermediate customers uh, could be wholesalers, distributors, uh, retailers or any other organization or entity that facilitate the distribution and sale of products uh, to the end user. Uh, for example, uh, some non-for-profit organizations that uh, help certain demographics within uh, the, uh, the population, uh, they might act as intermediate uh, customers. So, from from the perspective of uh, logistics you know let's say you are a logistics manager the customer is any delivery location where the product or the goods will be transported 
So this can include uh, homes, consumer homes, or retail or wholesale businesses, um, uh, receiving docks of manufacturing uh, plants, warehouses, uh, uh, other locations involved in the movement and storage of uh, products. So from the perspective of logistics, uh, we will focus on ensuring efficient and timely delivery of goods uh, to the designated customer locations, uh, regardless if it is residential or, or, or business establishment. So for us, from perspective, this is the customer. So very, very important. When you have a case study or when you are discussing a, a business matter with your team to to agree on who is your customer because the perspective will change who is the customer for example if you are in hr who is your customer these are the other departments that you are serving so very very important to discuss with your team, who is the customer, the definition of the customer. And sometimes you, you spend some time um, um, profiling the customer. That's why in marketing, for example, we create mar uh, a market persona. So we, 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 um, uh, we try to visualize who is this customer. So why? Because it will be different serving a, 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 a type of customer to a type of customer. So now let's let's talk about the basic principles of the marketing concept. Um, so the first one is the customer needs and requirements. These are the basic. It's it's more than just a, a product or service. Uh, this principle uh, emphasizes the understanding and fulfilling customer needs and requirements. Now I'm putting myself in the customer shoes and I'm thinking, okay, what this particular customer needs? What are the requirements? And this should be the primary focus of your marketing effort. So it implied that, you know, successful, successful uh, marketing starts with identifying what customers want and tailoring uh, products or services to meet these needs. Um, so, for example, if your company manufactures smartphones, you know, uh, so all these big names, they conduct market research to understand the features and specifications that customers desire and develop uh, products that align with those uh, preferences. And here is very important um, observation. Customers, when they talk about their needs and requirements, or sometimes aspiration, you know, I wish my phone can help me with this. They use a natural language. We call it natural language, you know. They don't talk technical jargons. So that's why, for example, we have business analysts who can uh, uh, transform the, the customer story into uh, technical specifications or product configurations that we can actually work on and actualize. Um, and of course, different customers have different needs and requirements. So uh, customers are not homogeneous. Um, their preferences and requirements may vary and the marketing uh, professionals or marketeers need to segment the target market and develop offerings that cater to specific customer segments uh, that's why we have primary segments and secondary segments so we can differentiate these small uh, uh, changes in requirements um, for example of course uh, clothing clothing is the easiest example here so you will find that um, clothing retailers they offer different lines of clothing to appeal to different customer groups um, um, and and they categorize these lines for example professional uh, attire or work attire 
this will cater to working individuals or casual uh, clothing or um, um, uh, uh, specific lines for uh, younger customers. So you can see the differences. Uh, product, uh, your product or your service will become meaningful only when this product or this service is available and positioned from the customer perspective. So this is very important to effectively position products or uh, services in a way that resonate with the customer perspective. Uh, so we need to understand the customer motivations, desires, preferences, pain points, uh, and, and we try to align the marketing messages and strategies to, uh, to what we uh, identify. For example, when, when the, there are ads for uh, anything related to uh, kids, babies, you will see that uh, it's in uh, a nice household, clean, bright colors, uh, beautiful babies, healthy babies. Um, uh, uh, the mother and the father, they look rested. Um, uh, they look nice. They look uh, happy. They, uh, they look they look as if they don't bother <laughs> with, uh, um, with any struggles or anything like this. So they still a dream in the ad. If I will use this product, I might be close to uh, this um, uh, to this dream and of course when you are selling luxury or marketing luxury products for example like luxury um, a car manufacturer uh, they would position their vehicles as symbols of status you know uh, so you will find that they emphasize features like exclusivity craftsmanship you know, so they appeal to their target uh, customers. And you will find that they use marketing tactics uh, totally different than household products. Uh, you, you, when is the last time you uh, saw an ad for Porsche, for example? Not so much. Why? Because they use different tactics. I don't want to appeal to a household that cannot afford uh, my uh, my product. No, I want to target specific customers, and I go directly to their uh, uh, to their uh, 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 right uh, place. Okay. We admitted new people. Good. So here we want to differentiate between the transactional marketing or and relational relationship marketing. Um, of course, these, uh, the 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 term relationship marketing is not that um, uh, young <laughs> in the business literature, but we still haven't come up with new. Uh, uh, vivid uh, theories, so that's the, the latest. So transactional marketing is the traditional approach. It focuses on individual transactions between the business or the company and the customer. Uh, the primary goal here in this type of marketing, transactional marketing, is to complete the sale. OK, uh, so the, the, the company's efforts are typically centered around promoting the product or the, the service, attracting new customers and closing the sale. So once the transaction is complete, the relationship between the, co the company and the customer may be limited uh, to that uh, transaction. Um, you know, um, for example, a retailer offering discount or 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 something uh, uh, on a specific product to attract customers. We have more people joining. Okay. Um, so 
our aim or our marketing efforts is just to create awareness, generate sales, and complete the transaction. There is no relationship uh, with with the with the uh, with the customer, and we discovered that no, this is not enough. You know, so so we evolved to uh, uh, relationship marketing. So this is a more uh, of uh, a strategy that we focus on long term relationship. Um, so, and, and here from the uh, supply chain perspective, we want to emphasize this, you know, development of the long term or strategic relationship or strategic partnership with our supply chain partners. This is not limited to customers only or end users only. No, we are talking about suppliers distributors and any business partner that will be involved in my supply chain. So the objective here is to build strong uh, and enduring uh, connection with these stakeholders. Um, uh, we try to foster loyalty and preference over the long term. Um, and here we want to create a mutual value, you know, win-win situation. And we want to understand the, the, uh, uh, the supply chain partners' needs, including the customers and other businesses. Uh, and now we talk about uh, a more personalized experience, you know. Um, for example, software companies, uh, they, uh, they sell uh, the product, but they provide ongoing support. Uh, they provide training, they uh, provide regular updates. Um, so so we, they want to establish a long term uh, relationship. And this goes to anyone um, or any entity in your um, uh, supply chain. So the concept of relationship marketing to a specific segment uh, sometimes, uh, some literature call it one-to-one -one marketing um, and, or, or micro-marketing, you know. So this approach will make you recognize that each individual customer may have unique requirements, uh, unique preferences, unique needs. Rather than treating all customers as a homogeneous group, no, we want to personalize the marketing effort and build, build individualized relationship with our customers. Of course, we, I cannot target specific people, but I try to create these micro segments within my market i'll give you an example i don't know if you started receiving uh, ads on HelloFresh or not probably not maybe it's not in your uh, country but whenever i use HelloFresh in uh, in a class uh, students because they search the internet they start receiving ads from HelloFresh. so the ads will be different one time uh, the ad is for um uh, an older lady and she says that since she retired uh, she want to as uh, you know cook healthy meals um, uh, in a short time so you can see the age the preference and the uh, motivation you know the motive for this particular lady and this ad will resonate with certain demographics another um uh, ad with a younger woman uh, she's working and again she wants to eat healthy and to feed her family healthier without the hassle of cooking because she doesn't have time uh, another um, uh, ad is for a man who became a single father 
And again, he has no experience in cooking and he wants to feed his kids uh, good, um, a good food. So they, they divided their um, uh, segment, their primary segment or secondary segment into micro segments so they can target and personalize the message. Um, and when we do this, we reduce transaction costs by understanding and addressing the unique requirements of individual customers. We can streamline our operations so we can reduce the cost uh, and we tailor the processing and the communication and the interactions to specific needs of each customer micro segment. And we avoid unnecessary expenses associated with um, uh, any efficient, inefficiencies or any misalignments. And of course, this will lead to better accommodation for our customer uh, requirements. So when we adopted this micro marketing or one to one approach, uh, we can meet specific needs and preferences for our uh, customers. And, and, and this is more personalized. And of course, higher customer uh, uh, satisfaction. Uh, of course, we, our our target here is customer loyalty. You know, um, uh, uh, strengthen our competitive advantage in the market. And here we move the uh, individual or customer transaction into something routinely our customers do. You know, so uh, uh, every week I will order my HelloFresh order, for example, or I will uh, order my Instacart order, or I will go to uh, a full circle um, uh, close to my house and I will see what new uh, uh, products that they carry uh, here. So it, it will become part of the, the, uh, uh, the routine and of course, once this happens, it's it's better business uh, for uh, the company. So let's talk about the three discrepancies that we need to overcome to enable the exchange of goods or services. So we might have discrepancy in space. So here we talk about the geographical distance or the actual separation between the location uh, where the goods or the services will be produced and the location where they will be consumed. So, of course, almost in, in all cases or, or, or in many cases, production activities and consumption don't happen in the same place. Um, some services, no, they will happen in the same place. For example, if you are in uh, um, um, in a market with your family and there is food stand uh, that um, uh, prepare a hot dog, for example, hot dog cart or, or hot dog stands. So the production itself happens in front of you and it will be consumed almost in the same place. But in general, you know, there are discrepancy in, 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 in place. So we need to overcome this discrepancy. We need to establish an efficient distribution network and supply chain to transport the product from the production center to the consumer market. Uh, so we are talking about transportation, logistics, warehousing, uh, retail, outlets so we need to bridge the spatial gap between production and consumption um, another discrepancy in time so there is a difference in timing between the production and the consumption of the, the goods or services um, production activities happen in advance of customer demand and we have this temporal temporal time uh, gap and and as a company 
uh, as a supply chain, we need to overcome this discrepancy. So we need to manage inventory levels, uh, forecast demand accurately, and implement a production schedule that align with customer needs. So the customer will find the product uh, uh, easier and at the right time, and we minimize waste uh, in time. Not only waste in time, we want to minimize waste from unsold items. So that's why the word optimize is very important. Uh, also discrepancy in quantities, you know, or assortment. Um, so this discrepancy involves the mismatch between the customer demand and the manufacturing uh, supply. Um, usually customers will seek small quantities uh, or a wide assortment of products. And as manufacturing companies, we, sp we specialize in producing large quantities. Uh, and we might have uh, limited assortment or variety uh, because why we want to achieve economies of scale. Um, so again, we want to manage the supply chain uh, to overcome this discrepancy so we can understand the customer preference so i can produce the assortment that caters to this uh, to these preferences uh, market segmentation will help uh, in this uh, offering product variety uh, that matches you know these uh, demands uh, we might offer customization options uh, so all of these are tactics that can help uh, with overcoming these uh, discrepancies. So we want, again, still we are talking about eliminating these discrepancies. So we, um, um, uh, we have different strategies. Um, uh, for example, spatial uh, con uh, convenience. So this is the level of ease and convenience experienced by the customer in terms of the shopping time and effort required. So we want to reduce the distance and effort customers need to travel uh, to access uh, uh, certain products or services. And when we design our supply chain, we design it in a way that provides spatial convenience. Um, uh, so selecting the retail outlet or the distribution uh, centers or the fulfillment centers. We do this strategically, making the products easily accessible to customers. I believe one of the uh, uh, success factors, key success factors for McDonald's is the, the strategy they adopted to have a, a, a McDonald's franchise within 10 minutes of any customer in the US. So um, uh, other franchises, for example, they say, OK, there should be some distance between a franchise to a franchise. So, so their franchisees, they don't compete for the same um, uh, uh, customers. McDonald's realized, no, I want my customer, wherever they are, to have a McDonald's uh, 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 within 10 minutes walk. Uh, then they started to cater to um, a, a, a cars, vehicles. So they have drive through. Why? They want to create this spatial convenience. Uh, of course, there are other tactics that you can you can create this spatial con uh, convenience. For example, you can locate your distribution center uh, um, away, um, um, but you you provide lots of parking uh, space, and you provide also some activities. You know, like when you go to IKEA, 
people sometimes go and they spend the day in IKEA. You know, they, 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 if they are hungry, they have food, uh, they have nice places to sit. Uh, some, some of the IKEA centers that they have uh, kids' areas. Um, so it's, it's becoming a whole experience, a whole day experience. And also in e-commerce, you can provide this. So um, when you provide fast and reliable shopping options, ensuring that the customers uh, uh, will receive their orders quickly and conveniently, uh, regardless of the geographical location, now you are creating spatial convenience. Uh, the second tactic is lot size. So the number of units or quantity of the product um, uh, uh, that you will carry, you know, so, so, so supply chain aims to accommodate customers' desired lot sizes. Um, uh, so if they want to buy in bulk or smaller quantities, so if you go to buy Pepsi or water, for example, you can buy uh, um, a, a packet of 24 uh, uh, bottles, but at the same time, you can grab a cold uh, bottle of water from the fridge and, and, and you get it. So the lot size of what I will purchase, uh, again, different sizes to accommodate different needs. Uh, a very important discrepancy or or pain is waiting time. So we try to minimize the waiting time. So it's the amount of time the customer must wait between ordering a product or a service and receiving it. And we try hard to minimize this wait uh, or waiting time so we can enhance customer uh, satisfaction. And that's why now customers are asking for prompt uh, delivery, you know. Um, uh, think of um, uh, fast food delivery, for example. I order the meal. I want to have it, you know, within 10 minutes or maybe less. <laughs> uh, also, product variety and assortment. So the range and the variety and the diversity of the products available to the customer. Um, so we, of course, it depends on the business. So each business or each industry uh, will allow you to, to cater to a different levels of product varieties. Uh, some, some companies, they, they deal with only one service and one service only. Uh, for example, think of excavation, uh, um, uh, yeah, excavators. So if I'm digging, I'm a digging company, this is the only service I'm providing, you know, so the, the industry itself uh, will force me to have a limited assortment of products or services. So any question? Okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, omni-channel marketing. So I don't know if you heard this word before or not, but this is an approach when the company engages with customer uh, customers through multiple channels. Uh, for example, online platforms, brick and mortar stores, telephone mobile apps, social media. So it, it's, it's a variety of channels so I can reach the customer. For example, H&M, you can go to the store, so it's a brick and mortar, you can order uh, online, you can have their apps, you can even place an order through the telephone, uh, you can engage with them on social media, and actually, there are they are very, very responsive to uh, to social media. So here you want to provide a seamless, integrated uh, customer experience. So whenever my preferred uh, channel, uh, they cater to me, and we call it touch points. So here you are providing uh, spatial convenience. 
uh, you are providing, uh, you are catering to the lot size. So again, I can order uh, um, a bulk purchases or single item purchase. Uh, you are trying to minimize the waiting time. And also, you are not only uh, uh, offering product variety and assortment, but also you are offering various touch points. So this will enhance uh, the, um, the experience of your, uh, your customer. So we have different levels of customer accommodation. Accommodation means responding to customer needs and requirements. Again, within the supply chain, we talk about customer service, customer satisfaction, and customer success. And please bear in mind that uh, in the middle of the supply chain, you still have customers. So these are your business partners. So, uh, so these general terms can apply to any uh, uh, entity within your supply chain. So customer service, we are very familiar with this. You know, we, we, we get, as customers, we get the support and assistance uh, that we need, uh, whether, dur whether before or during or after the purchase uh, process. Um, so, uh, think of addressing customer inquiries. You know, I'm just a shopping around. Have you heard of this word before? Or I have questions about your product or service. So this happens before uh, uh, the purchase. Uh, resolving issues, of course. Complaints, big, <laughs> big uh, uh, in customer service. Uh, so we, we provide customer service that focuses on meeting the immediate needs of uh, the customer and we in, we try to ensure that their basic expectations are met customer satisfaction this goes beyond uh, basic customer service it aims to ensure that customers are happy they are pleased with their overall experience uh, of course meeting customer expectations but no, exceeding customer expectations, creating a positive perception uh, in their mind about your, uh, your company, uh, the, uh, the products, or the services. There is a famous example that we, we always use uh, is one customer service rep in Zappos. Zappos, uh, Zappos is a company that sells um, uh, shoes uh, from different brands. He spent six hours <laughs> trying to solve a problem, uh, of course, related to the supply chain and the order of the customer. Uh, so he spent six hours trying to solve this, uh, uh, this problem with the customer. Uh, and at the end, we have su a customer success. So we take customer accommodation to the highest level by focusing on long-term success. So we create loyalty, you know. Okay. Um, so proactively, I'm working with the customer so I can help them uh, achieve their goals, overcome any challenges and realize the full value of my products or uh, my service. So here, my aim is strategic partnership uh, with my customers so I can give them the maximum value um, and, of course, to get uh, the maximum value of uh, their business. So let's talk in detail about these elements. So when we talk about customer service, the uh, we said that the objective here is to, um, you know, provide uh, 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 the right service or the right support uh, for my customers uh, before and during and after the sale. So we make sure that uh, we provide the right amount 
you know so the re they receive the appropriate quantity or amount of the product they need uh, so i can uh, i must accurately fulfill the customer order uh, there is no shortage or excess inventory um, uh, to enable me meet uh, the customer requirements the right products this is huge you know when the lar when we talk about large number of uh, uh, orders packing the wrong product happens and it happened to me several times so we make sure that the customers receive the exact product they ordered um and uh, so uh, you know, we make sure the, uh, the the product itself is available. The packaging uh, is done right, so we des we we offer the uh, desired uh, uh, product. Uh, the right time, you know. So we we try to deliver the products uh, or services to the customers at the expected or desired time. So when we are talking business to business. Um, for example, if we are talking about construction, uh, a company, I might place the order, but I want to get the products at a certain time. Because, for example, I don't have a space to store these items. So I want to, to get these items at the right stage in the product, but I place the order uh, earlier. So it happens a lot uh, in B2B. Uh, uh, businesses uh, or interactions or transactions, sorry. Uh, uh, also, we want to make sure that we uh, um, we deliver the product uh, or the service to the designated location um, at the right price. This is huge. Pricing and people who are specialized in pricing, um, they, they try to address the pricing concerns, pricing related concerns from the company perspective and from the customer perspective. So we want to make sure that we charge the correct and fair price for the product or service. Um, so the pricing practices that we will um, uh, use should cater to a win-win situation between the company and uh, the uh, um, uh, the customers uh, invoicing, you know, so accurate inv invoicing. We don't do mistakes in 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 the invoice. Uh, resolving any pricing discrepancies or issues. Um, uh, also, customer service provides uh, the right information. You know, so the information we exchange with the customers are accurate and relevant to the product or the service. Um, this could be the, the uh, product details, the specifications, usage, guidelines, availability. So we don't want to include some misleading uh, information. Um, uh, you know, some of these hype words that are used in marketing, uh, sometimes the government might consider these as misleading you know so uh, um, when you say a, a very good source of calcium okay that's a claim what's the evidence that this yogurt is a good source of calcium yes see the ingredients and see the nutrition um, um, details you will find that we our product provide uh, for example, um, a five percent of the uh, calcium intake required uh, for babies, for example, something like this. So information is important. Um, so there are certain fundamentals when it comes to customer service. So you, you want to make sure that your company uh, have these fundamentals. And right now, I repeat it again, customers are greedy. We are becoming greedy. We want better, faster, cheaper. <laughs> uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you have availability. So you have ability to meet the demand 
uh, ensuring that the products or services are accessible uh, in stock when the customers needs them. Uh, also, the fill rate. So this is uh, another uh, uh, terminology from the supply chain uh, terminology. So fill rates are the percentage of customer orders that we completely fulfilled. Um, so there are no missing items and there are no back orders. So this is the fill rate. So for example, monthly I receive 10,000 orders. 90% of these orders are fulfilled completely. This is very huge uh, for companies. Uh, stock out frequency, you know, so this is the occurrence of situations when the desired product or services are temporarily unavailable. Um, so you, 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 uh, you try to buy a, a product and they say currently not in stock. So this um, uh, this is uh, a frustration for uh, the uh, the customer. Uh, orders shipped uh, complete. So here we try to ensure that the customer orders are shipped with all the requested items. Uh, this is very important for the customer uh, sorry for, for the customers and for the company but mainly for the company because if i cannot fulfill all the items in one shipment it means that i have to ship the remaining in a separate ship shipment you know or a subsequent uh, shipment or ad additional delivery so this is additional cost that i will uh, uh, carry uh, also, we measure operational performance. So we, we try to measure how efficiently and effectively the company carries out the customer service um, uh, processes or activities. Uh, also speed, how prompt um, that we are uh, processing the customer uh, orders, fulfilling and delivering these orders. Uh, another element is consistency. Um, so I I need to meet the requirements every time. So I, I need to increase the rate of uh, providing uh, uh, quality service uh, all the time throughout all the interactions and transactions with my customer. Uh, also flexibility, you know, so my ability to adapt and respond to emerging needs and preferences and changing and, and, and changes in the demand in, 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 uh, in a way that doesn't jeopardize my business. Uh, another important element is malfunction recovery. So how can I quickly recover from any operational malfunctions or disruption to the service. Uh, what comes to my mind is an uh, issue that happened here with our light rail. Our, our light rail is, is um, like a small train or, or a tiny train that's um, a city train. Um, in Egypt, it's very similar to the metro that we got rid of it. Um, uh, uh, in Cairo, for example, in 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 uh, uh, in a neighborhood called the Masri Gdida. So, the, so we have something very similar in the city uh, that I was, and there was some disruption uh, in the service between um, uh, certain stops, and the company provided shuttle service quickly to the customers. So we can we can at least we, we don't waste lots of, of of time so your ability to respond to these mal operational malfunctions and to recover from uh, these malfunctions uh, it happened twice one time they spent the whole day uh, with disruption in service the next uh, time it happened it was just a matter of hours and uh, uh, it was um, it was done uh, another very important factor is service reliability. You know, how as 
a, a customer. I can depend on your service and I trust uh, in your service. Uh, this is very uh, important. Um, another factor is damage free. So sometimes, you, you know, you will receive the order damaged why because it, it it was not packed properly so you need to protect the quality and the integrity of uh, uh, the items so these are some of the factors that will differentiate good customer service from bad customer service so uh, and companies actually do some audits uh, on their customer service operations so they can make sure uh, that everything is uh, done so we covered this um yeah so um yeah we covered these okay um okay yeah let's let's talk here about um this uh this chart this this is a very very uh good way to represent any process and we call it process uh, map uh, or flow chart. And in any, uh, I want the, I want you to acquire this as a skill, because believe me, it will differentiate your presentations and um, uh, uh, the way you think uh, w w in in your uh, in your work. You know, uh, whatever your position is, if you know how to do mind maps or um, uh, flow charts or uh, process maps you will impress uh, people and you will organize your your thinking so you uh, here is the interaction between the customer and the seller you know so where where the customer gets their expectations of course from my requirements i need a product to help me with abc or word of mouth my friend told me about this amazing product ca that can so solve this problem or past experience in the past i needed a product that can help me with this so i can build my expectations okay and then i have a perceived performance so uh, the company tries to fulfill these expectations through specific performance um, so here the company down trying to uh, uh, manage the perception uh, or the expectations of the customer by communicating the how my product will help the customer so i'm setting expectations you know um i have some standards for the performance how i will meet these expectations um so this is what is written uh, you know on paper and when we perform the service we have actual performance and now we interact with the customer so there there should they have a perceived uh, um, assessment of the performance that they receive you know, so there are certain gaps that we need to fulfill in our interaction uh, between uh, the seller and the customer. So gap number one is the uh, the difference between the customer expectations and my way as a business of managing the perception of expectations through my product or my service. Here is a, another a, a gap. Uh, we have also a gap, for example, between the actual performance and the perceived performance. Okay. People are um, logging in. Where are we? So when you... Uh, when you draw the, the the process like this you can you can identify where are the gaps uh is there a gap between the actual performance for example and the perceived performance how can i bridge this gap uh, you can do this even for your uh, work or your job 
and you see who's the customer here for example my manager and you and 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 you try to apply this model and see uh so we have a uh, gap number one it's knowledge how can i bridge the gap between uh, my customers so the customer uh you know um have the right knowledge or understanding and also myself is having a, as a company have the um uh, the knowledge or understanding of my customers um so i of course i i've sent you this so you can read it it's a very good uh read and of course in the book uh they touch on this and we try to minimize the gap between the customer expectations and the actual performance or the perceived performance uh, they uh, they receive. Um, and why? Because ultimately, I want to reach not even customer satisfaction. I want to re to to reach customer success. Uh, so, any question? I have sent you this. Um, I sent you this file, right? Or not? Please remind me if I sent you this file. Um, I checked before, just before uh, the start of our lecture today. Uh, no, the last thing you sent is the third uh, chapter. Okay, I will. Okay, I will check. Maybe it's still in the outbooks. I didn't click send or I, something. I want to, uh, to, um, to ask about something. I, uh -huh. I don't know if I miss it or not. Um, in, in last lecture, uh, I think we not finished the uh, chapter three. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I said read read the rest. <laughs> oh, I, I, I read it. I read it, but uh, oh. I want to. Uh, and, uh, is if it's for preparation for today or just uh, uh, our read only is enough? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, if you have a specific question about a, a, a specific. Um, a, um, you know, concept or something like this, I can provide, I can even record um, a, a message and I can send it to you all. So no. if you have questions, uh, let's let's no. use this weekend uh, so you can send me all your questions and I can um, uh, answer these questions um, and record the answers and, and send you the link for the video like okay. a q and a session okay so this is yes muhammad yusuf uh, good morning um, hi good morning so uh, i have another question because uh, i didn't see any uh, assignments or quizzes in the um, model so oh I, I want, this I is strange want... really there is no there there should be some quizzes nothing uh, i have also nothing oh Okay, okay. I'm glad that you told me because what I, I got the understanding in the previous uh, professor um, set the um, set model. Okay, I okay. I will I will visit um, uh, Moodle and I will see. But you you supposed to have a quiz <laughs> on every chapter. <laughs> Okay, so if if you don't mind, uh, Doctor Halen, can you please extend the the time frame for those ones so we can uh, we will have the time to answer them. If, okay, if... okay, yes, okay, okay. Thank you. So so what we will do is that if you have questions, please email uh, the questions to me. Um, you have my email. I will um, write it here again. And Professor, could you please add uh, Friday's invitation in the um, Teams? Add what? Uh, to add weekly invitation in the Teams because we have only Monday election, but nothing about Friday. So, okay, okay. Well, the Friday was um, something extra that I'm I'm providing so we can catch up because you know the material is, is a lot and heavy. Uh, so I will add it. Okay. So let me write in my notes. Um, 
so I will I will I will revisit uh, model again and I will see what's there. My understanding is that it it was properly uh, done, but it seems that I need to to revisit this as well. And don't worry about the timing. Um, I'm working with the student support, so we can provide as much accommodation for uh, this uh, uh, this subject. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, mm -hmm. So, for how long will have the Friday uh, lectures? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know. Uh, I, I I'm I'm okay. You know, if if uh, if we will continue this, and as I said before, um, uh, I can do it even if if you don't attend and you will see the recording i'm also okay with this because i know that you all of you are working i'm in the same boat uh yeah. and we are juggling so much um uh, and we have so much on our plate so um uh so I'm, I'm i'm very flexible okay and there are no uh grades uh in the attendance that's why we don't have quizzes during the lecture if i want to force you to attend <laughs> I will have uh, in lecture assignment or in class assignment or something like this, but no, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, my focus is the learning. I want you to learn. This is one of the amazing uh, topics to to learn about business. Yeah. Uh, so please, if you have questions uh, uh, regarding uh, chapters one to four, uh, uh, please email it to me. So I can answer all the questions and record the answer and send it to you. Uh, I will visit Moodle again. I will see um, uh, if everything is set up uh, the right way or not. Uh, what else? And I will add um, uh, the link to the Friday and the Monday uh, lectures. One last uh, question, uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. uh, is uh, there any uh, chance to uh, uh, move from um, Google Meet to Teams? Uh, right now, I have clash between different Teams accounts. And every time I try to look, so it's, it's, it's a purely technical issue for me. So uh, I, I am flexible with you, so please be flexible with me. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so uh, that's uh, 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 I had uh, the same uh, situation before with uh, so my previous uh, university when I was like attending classes. Every time I open Teams, it will go directly to the old account. Uh, okay? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm just thinking that maybe I can use another laptop and I make it solely for uh, for Windsor. Um, so, the, yeah, the advice have... is, yeah, the advice is just delete uh, Teams, okay, and, and log in from uh, Office uh, 365 uh, uh, online account. This, uh, work. this is very interesting because I have Office 365 with another university, and my work and my um, a, a, my doctor's study. Oh. And also, I'm I'm a member at the the Project Management Institute, and I I volunteer with them as a consultant. So we have again <laughs> Office okay, 360. Let's give it in uh, Google Meet. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 really a hassle this term for me. And oh my god, and I have several authenticators on my cell phone, so it's an IT jungle. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I don't want to rant or complain. But please be flexible. We will uh, we will uh, carry on on uh, uh, on on Google Meet. So it's it's uh, for now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So any other question or comment before we leave? Okay, and I will send you the uh, the slides now, so you can follow up. And of course, you have access to the book itself. Please uh, use this weekend to review the material again and send me any question, and we will catch up soon. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye, Thank everyone. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you.